combination of the beautiful classical style with so many different influences as well that uh, that make her just so much fun to listen to. I'm on the mend, feeling a lot better. Is there anything you want me to re-sing during those two days where I was still almost better? Right, we should we should look. Beat the boy! Get him to sing! <laughs> He got it, I got him to sing. There's still one of the things. I think I just it, crashed. <laughs> you witnessed like, yeah, the yeah, moment but... when my brain just went. Like, toast uh -uh. Real oh, you can. Certainly the speed at which this album was created is not something I'd like to do all the time. But when it comes to an album like this, it really worked well because there isn't a lot to overthink. These songs are beautiful. Uh, you don't want to get clever with them, you don't want to get too cute with the arrangements, you want them to be beautiful and you want, like I said, those first instincts of what makes you feel great to be there and I think that when you're messing with classics, you you want to get in and do the job and, and make something that's beautiful but simple. They're saying yes, Lord, greet thee. They're saying yes, Lord, we greet thee. Okay, so I have yay here. Yeah, but you can do yay. I, I think yay is right, actually. Oh, yo. Yo. Yo, Lord. Yo, Lord, we greet thee. <laughs> And the idea that it happened between gigs in a few weeks' time uh, for this project was uh, was really was really a good thing. We we put it to bed and felt like we did everything that we needed to do to make this album gorgeous. Good afternoon. We are on our way to the historic Abbey Road Studios at 3 Abbey Road. And I'm excited. I've recorded there before. I did some recording there uh, for the Awake album. And it is a uh, beautiful, technically superb, acoustically impeccable studio. So many of the great film scores are recorded there. So much incredible music is recorded there. From the smaller studios where the Beatles recorded their, you know, all their albums and, and the bigger room, which we're going to be in, where just every great orchestra in the world is recorded. See this, uh, this striped pathway right here? By the uh, timber building supplies truck. That's where uh, the Beatles walked uh, on their Abbey Road cover. Historic. Let's go. Now, somewhere on this wall I signed when I recorded uh, my last Abbey Road session here. I forgot where it was, but I'll look for it. Oh, look, that's where the Beatles signed it. No, just kidding. It is a bit intimidating, I think, when you when you walk in at first, but it's mostly just fun. It's mostly inspiring. It mostly makes you just want to rise up to the standard of the place that you're in. It's sexy, isn't it? It's just it's just sex right there. Whew. That's it's like a museum piece. I can't I can't get in there, but that's all right. It's cool because there's a door. that were pretty complicated to sing. One of them is uh, Panis Angelicus, and it's um, deceptively hard. It's, uh, it's one of those songs that melodically and in the vocal line is pretty straightforward, but it's arranged in such a way, it's in such a key that vocally um, it takes a lot of focus and a lot of concentration, and there's a lot of, there's very subtle changes in the melody. Beat one is right, you're just right, held right. into it. Right, yes. okay. So, ba, ba, ba. Conducting today is my good friend, Bill Ross, who is just the man. I rarely do an orchestra session without him. And that was one of the songs that I did pretty much, you know, one take live with the orchestra. It was very emotional for me. It was a, a huge dream for me to sing such beautiful music with that orchestra and in that legendary studio of Abbey Road. It was a real privilege for me. As far as kind of just learning things on the fly like that, I really like it because it, it lets the musical instincts come out the way they should be. Um, I don't like to sit with somebody for too long before I go record because I tend to overthink things. And I think a lot of the times the freshness and the energy is in the first couple takes. All these songs are famous, I knew them pretty much, but the, the real details of them, I tried to just kind of wait until I got into the studio to really sink into them and, uh, and see what kind of came naturally. And that's how it's done. I said to myself, if I'm ever going to do a Christmas album, it's going to be probably like one of the most classical albums that I've done. And I want to do it with a proper symphony. And I want to pick the most lyrical, orchestral Christmas music that's been written. And to have the world-renowned London Symphony Orchestra available, uh, now they were on the top of my list.
Is he gonna go to the ba da da boom? Does he go to ba da da da? Does he go to the G sharp? Ow, I love that in there. Man, you guys are good. There is a song in French, Petit Papa Noel. It's one of the beautiful Christmas songs written in France. Parfait. Parfait. It's a gorgeous melody. It's not one that people in America have heard a lot of. And it means Little Father Christmas, which I think is really adorable. So, you know, had to be done. That's what I wanted. Cool. Excellent, man. Woo! Yeah, uh, Josh here, coming at you at Abbey Road Studio One. Oh, that's so good. Um, our last day of recording what will hopefully be, turn out to be a wonderful Christmas album. I finished my last vocal just four minutes ago, and we finished our last downbeat of the orchestra about two hours ago. And now we take it all back to LA, and we master it in New York and take some photographs. Uh, I'm here at the uh, beautiful Quixote Studios in Los Angeles, California, shooting some artwork for the album. And I'm working with an absolutely brilliant, legendary photographer named Frank Openfels III. I was thinking like a straight ahead shot this high up. Even yeah, closer? Even closer. Sure. And he's done so many different great album covers, and, and I was very happy that he joined on for this because, you know, much like the sound of this music. Um, we're kind of combining some really traditional elements of what people think of as Christmas and, and some other stuff that's really kind of cool and creative and, and interesting to look at. Standing is, but yeah. this guy's ugly. <laughs> it's me. It's me, guys. I was just kidding. It's me who's ugly. I'm ugly. I will be spending Christmas at home with my family, like I always do. Uh, to me, Christmas really represents that togetherness and coming home and, and, and that feeling. I really can't wait to get off the road at that time and, uh, and come home and be with my family. <laughs> Hi there. I've had a lot of fun making this album. It's been very quick. It's been very kind of hectic because we've been just recording it during days off. But um, I think it's an incredible album, Christmas or otherwise. And the people that have decided to join me on it are one of a kind and uh, top notch. It was a great honor for me to work with all these musicians and to record such beautiful music. Uh, in closing, this is probably the only Christmas album I'll ever do. I felt like now was the right time for me to do it. Every time I release a Christmas song, it, it gets a great reaction. One was nominated for an Oscar. Um, it's music that, you know, really is, uh, is special to me. And, uh, and I think that it's, it's stuff that, that uh, during that special time of year, people can really enjoy it. Hopefully they'll enjoy it. Hopefully you will enjoy it. And uh, I know I certainly enjoyed making it. And uh, thanks for coming along on the ride. And I'll see you on tour. And uh, next studio album is going to be uh, in the works very, very soon. So uh, goodbye from Los Angeles. And uh, uh, 